Hey guys, it's me, Maximilian Xantis, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be talking about something that is very dear to my heart. Um, I'm gonna answer the question, how do we approach making a soft synth or making basically any synth or any sound sound vintage, sound retro or old. Um, there are basically like 100 synonyms for this. Uh, one thing I actually used to use was the term warm, um, which is kind of funny. I actually back in the day when I first started googled something like how to make your synths sound warm or something like that. So um, for me it was kind of a struggle. Uh, luckily with the help of a good friend of mine, Arthur, uh, who you may know as Allison, he really pushed me into the right direction and that's the, as exactly what I want to do or want to, what I want to be doing with this right here. This is going to be probably a series where I talk about how to approach making um, stuff sound cool and vintage and retro and all these fancy words. Basically how to make stuff that is kind of in the realm of music that I make or basically synths that I use, stuff that Allison uses or uh, stuff that... Um, Boards of Canada uses, um, uh, Taiko uses, or Home, uh, people like this basically that kind of go into this 80s tape ish era, sometimes like VHS ish stuff. So you probably do know what I mean, otherwise, you don't really have a reason to be here. So let's just get right into the thing. Uh, one last uh, reminder though, this is just like the basic tutorial. I'm really trying to keep this as basic as possible so everybody has the chance to follow this tutorial and that's also why I'm focusing um, my first episode on only using stuff that is within Serum. Normally I would use another synth, most of the time I use stuff from, stuff from Arturia or stuff from Yuhi. Um, but as I said I do want to keep it very basic and Serum is basically a common denominator. Uh, you could also use Massive. I ex actually prefer Massive just because I do like the reverb and the delay much more than the Serum ones. But uh, Serum is much more visually pleasing and much more easy to understand in my opinion, at least in terms of the UI. And um, that's why I'm using Serum. But of course you can use whatever you want. You can use hardware gear, you can use um, the craziest and coolest VSTs, you can use whatever you want. Uh, but we're gonna get started now. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna talk about oscillators or wavetables. So the basic point which where we start developing the sound from. Um, in Serum, Serum is a wavetable uh, synthesis or synthesizer and um, we're gonna uh, start with the first basic patch which is this saw which sounds like this. Just the basic saw. We're gonna add the second oscillator. I'm not gonna go too in depth in terms of basic synthesis. If you don't have basic synthesis down, you can still follow my tutorial, of course, just do exactly what I do. But I do, or I would advise you to actually go in and learn synthesis yourself. Because there are a lot of things um, that will help you much more if you do have a good foundation of synthesis. If you do want me to make a tutorial about that, let me know. But there are 100 million tutorials about synth synthesis on YouTube. Um, I'm going to go to the analog section and I'm going to use Basic Mini, which is like an emulation of the oscillators that were used in the um, Minimoog. And we're going to go through the wavetable position knob thing here and we're going to go to this. This is basically the square of the Mini and um, it sounds like this now. If we isolate this, this kind of has like an 8-bit feel-ish. Not really because this is like a... Um, like I said, the mini version of a square, but the square is often uh, associated with 8-bit music, uh, which I really like and generally like video game music. So um, I tend to often include squares in my music. Some people don't. Uh, but in terms of oscillators, you can basically pick whatever you want. But if you do want to be very like um, adherent, if that's even a word, uh, to um, the the kind of oscillators that were used in the 80s or 70s, um, especially in the 70s, you would probably stick to a saw wave or a square wave or triangle wave. You could also maybe try a sine wave, but early, early on, like um, in the 70s synths, a lot of synths did not have sine waves. And um, 
Yeah, or I don't even know if any uh, had sine waves. Uh, let me know if you do know. Um, but like I said, I'm just gonna pick the basic saw wave and the basic uh, mini square wave. Uh, first of all, we're gonna uh, fine tune this a little bit. Um, normally, if you would detune uh, with the fine pitch or with any kind of detune uh, knob, you would probably detune it like the in, in an equal amount. So if you would probably go like five plus on the one synth and, synth and one five minus on the other one or on the one oscillator and on the other oscillator. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, do that in unequal amounts or uneven amounts just because it's a little bit more unpredictable, a little bit more random, doesn't really make that much of a difference. But I do uh, think sometimes you just uh, gotta do these little quirky things that you enjoy. Uh, or these little weird things, whatever. Um, we're not gonna use the voice unison stack fun function here. You can, but I am not gonna do that just because I want to keep it very basic and do a very basic sound. We're gonna add noise, of course. Oh, by the way, this is how it sounds now. Just a little bit detuned. Um, we're gonna add noise. We're gonna go to the analog function or section again and gonna use the G60, which is I think the Juno 60, very likely to be the Juno 60, which is a synthesizer was very popular in the 80s and this is what we're going to use we're going to increase the level right about yeah, there maybe a little bit less uh, now if we go to the envelope one which is the envelope that modulates the amp uh, we're going to increase the release to around two seconds and now we have this Already sounds pretty nice. Um, of course, not really that usable yet. Um, also, we're gonna increase this, uh, or we're gonna punch this up one octave, so the square is playing one octave higher than the saw. Um, and like I said, I uh, I just uh, decreased the release a little bit because it was too long. Uh, this tutorial is basically you could you can change the envelopes to basically any sound. So this is like a basic thing you can use for plugs for pads, for leads, for basses. You could basically use most of these tips for any kind of sound. Uh, next up, of course, we're gonna add um, the filter. We're just gonna use the basic low pass 12 dB filter. I wouldn't advise to go too high on the cutoff, so no like 96 dB cutoffs if your synth has that or if your filter has that, because that's just a little bit too steep. I mean, if you're just trying to, or if you're trying to engineer a sound and like cut off all the stuff that's under like, I don't know, maybe like 30 Hertz, um, then of course do use like uh, a 96 dB cutoff if you have that. But we're gonna, we're trying to shape the sound and you shouldn't do it like super surgically. Um, so just like use a six low, a low pass 6 dB one or 12 dB low pass or 18 dB, maybe even 24. I'm just gonna use 12 so it's not too crazy. Um, we're gonna route uh, the first oscillator, the second oscillator and the noise through the filter. We're gonna decrease the cutoff to or lower the cutoff basically all the way down. So now there's no sound uh, or basically no sound. Um, and uh, then we're gonna take the second envelope and modulate the cutoff with it. So we have something that sounds like this. Not too crazy, but now we're gonna lower this. So we do not have any sustain here. Uh, we just have uh, the attack and the decay and the release modulating the uh, envelope. And we're gonna increase the decay. Also gonna increase the release so it's much smoother. This already is pretty nice. And this is really where the noise shines. If I turn the noise off, and if I turn the noise on, I'm gonna increase the effect. You can definitely go for this. It ki sounds kind of dirty. And if you like dirty, then that's how you do it. Um, I'm just gonna do it like this. I like a little bit of dirty. And um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take this like. Somewhere like there, that's pretty nice. Uh, generally some, somewhere around 10,000 Hertz is a good starting point. So you can of course make the cutoff, um, the filter go all the f uh, complete frequency spectrum. So it sounds like this, but this is too harsh for me. Um, generally when you're going for a vintage sound, you don't want the stuff to sound too harsh. So this is really nice already. got a pretty nice sound. Um, we're gonna also increase the drive a little bit to give it a little bit of saturation. 
uh, but be aware of the master so we're not clipping so I'm gonna decrease this so we still have headroom maybe a little bit like this yeah I'm probably gonna come back to this and the last thing we're gonna do on this tab uh, of course you could do one million things still but like I said I'm gonna keep it very simple um, is we're gonna take the LF01 and we're gonna modulate both of the oscillators fine-tuned sliders, fine-tuned sliders. And um, we're gonna, uh, I'm just gonna make it very strong, just so you really hear the uh, difference. Can you hear that? That's what people want, that's what we want, that's what we call warm and cool and nice. Already sounds. Pretty nice. Um, uh, actually, this is already pretty cool, but I'm gonna change it to sine wave and I'm also gonna turn off the BPM function, um, which now enables us to uh, change the rate under which the LFO modulates um, in hertz, which is cool because this is not synced to our BPM anymore, which again gives us a little bit of unpredictableness and randomness which is a big part of the whole vintage retro sound at least in my opinion um, but of course you could use that with um, BPM with the BPM function I'm just not gonna do that and if you would increase this you will get flutter this is basically a very VHS-ish sound so you have basically the pitch that goes fluttering up and down Sounds cool if you do like that. I'm just gonna keep it here, so more like a wow effect. This is actually pretty strong, but it still sounds really nice, I'm surprised. Uh, you can fine tune this as much as you want. I'm just gonna leave it here so it's very much audible. Of course you could do like a very small amount of that or even more if you were to go like for Balls of Canada sound, they really go hard with the um, tape wow and tape flutter sometimes. Mm. Of course, if you do have a real tape deck or if you have like um, uh, RC20 or other like tape emulation plugins, do use those if you want to. But like I said, I'm just gonna keep everything within Serum. And okay, now, now to the FX section. This is kind of the part where it gets kind of where I kind of struggle with Serum sometimes, because I don't really like the delay and the reverb of Serum that much. But I'm still gonna use them for this tutorial, but if you do have other reverbs, maybe go for something else. But maybe if you like the reverb perfectly fine, I personally don't. Um, uh, the delay is perfectly okay, but the reverb is kind of weird. Um, for this sound, we're actually not gonna use delay. Uh, if you do, if you would make this sound very plucky, so maybe like this. <laughs> The lay, of course, sounds very nice. Could increase this. Actually, let's increase this a little bit. It's pretty cool, but we're actually not going to use the delay. Um, let's increase this again. And, but of course we're gonna use the reverb, we're gonna use the hall. Normally you could go for plate if you're gonna go for more like an 80s kind of plate sound, but like I said, the reverb in Serum, I definitely prefer the hall. Um, we're gonna increase the size. Uh, the decay is pretty nice on 4.6. You could go higher or lower depending on how much stuff you have in your mix and how much other things you want to have reverbs and stuff. Um, if you're working with a mix engineer, uh, maybe you have to uh, lower those things because mix engineers get kind of, um, how do you say that? Uh, well, they often have a problem with long reverb tails and or or want them to um, or want you to print those out uh, separately, which is totally fine. And I don't want to um, hate on mix engineers here. Um, I really don't. But uh, it's like you really have to just be aware of some things. But if you are going for this kind of sound, uh, play around with the decay and the wetness, of course. And we're gonna increase the low cut a little bit so we have a little bit more of a cleaner sound. You don't really want the lows in the reverb. Um, you generally don't really need the low in this kind of sound, but I'm just gonna keep it because we're not using any other sound. Um, of course, if you're gonna use other sounds, be aware of frequency um, uh, colliding, however you say that <laughs> in English. Um, uh, so that not like your main chord sound doesn't have too much uh, bass 
and it kind of gets um, maybe into phase cancellation with the base or just kind of um, whatever. You, you probably know what I mean. Let's just continue and focus on the tutorial. I'm gonna increase this a little bit just to see. I'm just gonna play some random stuff. So right about here. Okay, we're gonna decrease the spin here because I don't really want the, we already got kind of a pitchy sound from this thing. Uh, with the reverb on, it actually kind of sounds kind of extreme, but uh, like I said, you can play around with the fine tune and maybe with another reverb it wouldn't sound that extreme. Um, and we're also gonna add some distortion just a little bit. Uh, if you're going for like uh, more like an 8-bit, 16-bit kind of thing, you could play around with the downsampling which sounds nice, um, but you could also go with tube or maybe soft clip or just try different ones. I'm just going to use tube. Um, let's increase the drive. Okay, this is probably... Let's increase this so you can actually hear this. This is probably too much. It very much depends on what kind of sound you want. I'm just going to give it a little bit because we already got some drive from the filter and I'm gonna put it on f around 50% and gonna decrease this because it's probably way too loud for you guys. Okay, this is pretty nice. Um, if you do want, you could now maybe EQ some parts um, with this or with your normal EQ you use, but I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. And I'm also gonna add a compressor. This is the next part where some mix engineers will probably kill me, but over compression is a big part of this kind of sound. Mm, back in the day when you would put something through tape and especially like maybe didn't gain stage properly, you would have, first of all, lots of noise floor. Second of all, tape saturation, third, third of all, I think that's how you say that, um, you would have compression. And uh, because a tape also is kind of like a compressor, which or it acts like a compressor, um, depending on how you use it. So we're also gonna add some compression. Normally I would use a, um, like a different kind of uh, compressor, maybe like the um, uh, co one compressor for new here, I can't remember how it's called, but it's a really good compressor. Um, or like the glue compressor inside of Ableton is really nice. Um, I think they actually have like a, a, a plugin that's called just the glue, which is for all the guys that don't use Ableton. Um, but yeah, let's just play around with the threshold so we actually get some gain reduction here. So right about there we have maybe like 6 dB gain reduction. We're gonna increase the attack a little bit so the uh, sound is pretty punchy. We don't just wanna squash it down like crazy. We're gonna decrease the release. And there we have it. This is a pretty much, this, this is the very basic uh, retro kind of sound, but Again, there. Or, or actually, I haven't talked about this, but when I started and I wanted to uh, get into this kind of music, there were so little tutorials about this. And if there were tutorials about similar stuff, they either just like uh, talked about one specific thing, and most of the time not really well, or they just made a tutorial that didn't really sound, or they made a synth that didn't really sound retro. <laughs> As you can hear, this is pretty nice. Maybe this is low. Okay, as you can hear, the tape wall was pretty extreme at the moment, especially if you're in the higher register, so you might want to decrease this a little bit. This is maybe too much, but then again, you really have to play around with what kind of sound you're gonna use. If you're gonna use like a very long lead sound, I think this sounds really nice. Um, leave a comment below if you do want me to go in more in depth, uh, meaning make more tutorials that uh, talk about um, how to make stuff like that with other stuff, maybe with uh, Arturias plugins, maybe talk about the plugins and VSTs I use. 
um, maybe talk about a specific thing, maybe talk about, uh, I could probably like make a whole video just about reverb or about delay or whatever. So let me know, also let me know how you, uh, if you did learn something from this video. And of course, if you have anything to add, let me know. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you very soon, guys. Um, bye.